Hi, I'm Raquel Villanueva coming to you live from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. Today we have a very special guest, the director of JPL, Lori Leshin. Not only is she the first woman to lead JPL, she's also known for her barrier-breaking leadership in the space industry and academia. She's also an accomplished geochemist and space scientist. We'll talk about her first 10 months here at JPL and also talk about some of the questions you've asked over the past couple days on Instagram. So we're gonna get started here in a second and I'm going to connect with Lori. And while we get connected, where is everyone joining us from today? Let's see, we are connecting with her right now. Perfect. There we go. Someone's coming in from Chile. Hello, California. Yeah. And we see Lori. Hi, hey, how Lori. are you? Welcome. Good. How are you doing? And it looks like you're joining yeah, us from I'm Mars today. Where in are you? The fabulous museum in uh, at JPL. Fantastic. So you started last may can yeah. you believe it's almost <laughs> it's been a year 10 months have gone like the fastest 10 months of my <laughs> life and and some of the happiest <laughs> uh, fantastic like what stands out most to the you people in those 10 of, months of jpl just the incredible team here first of all everybody's just been so extraordinarily welcoming to me and supportive as i've gotten to know the place better i knew jpl well before because i've worked with jpl for decades but being here every single day, it's just so incredibly inspiring. That's fantastic. And we love having you here. Also, you know, it is Women's History Month. And what does it mean to you to be the first woman to lead JPL? And then what are you doing to help women at JPL Thank lead you. and I, succeed? It, it's a thrill, first of all, to be doing this during Women's History Month. So thanks to everybody who's watching. But um, you know, for me, being the first woman in the now almost 87 year history of JPL, it's a huge honor. And I definitely feel that it's a responsibility as well. I'm, I, as a leader, as a woman leader, we, we hold space for other women. You know, We really work to help make our organizations places where everyone can thrive, not just women, but but men too, uh, all folks, everyone uh, can thrive. And so I, I just have focused on, uh, again, trying to continue a great legacy of JPL, of having diverse teams. We, we recently crossed the threshold of having more than 2,000 women on our team at JPL, which is, is incredibly exciting. So a lot more work to do always to make our organizations um, as inclusive as they can be. And that's certainly our goal here at JPL. One of the things we're really working towards is having more women in technical leadership roles, right? We have these 2000 incredible women. Many of them are extraordinary, uh, have extraordinary technical backgrounds and we want the, to make sure they're uh, reaching leadership potential here as well. Well, I can tell through the comments, so many people are inspired by you right now. And I'd also like to know, is there a specific woman that has inspired you throughout your life? Well, I would say there, there are two that I would name. So first is my own mom. My mom, Jerry Lerner Leshen was her name. She passed away about 18 months ago. Um, and uh, she was really the light of my life in so many ways. But mostly she was the person who always told me I could do anything. And I learned by watching her. Uh, she you know, raised a family. She had a great career. She was um, just a special human being. And so she's certainly one. Um, in terms of professional women, uh, Sally Ride was a huge inspiration to me. I uh, was fortunate enough to become friends with her and colleagues with her. And I learned so much on how to take the opportunities that we are given, but also the responsibility that comes with those as women leaders. Now, those are two great tributes and it was great to hear from you on those. We also have some Instagram questions that came in from people who've been submitting them for the past couple of days. Uh, Ethan wants to know, what is a, a typical day? Typical day, day is there's you? no typical day. Uh, so that's, that's one of the most exciting things is every week, there's incredible things happening. So it might be that, oh, hey, we just got 
a new sensor delivered to be integrated onto our Europa Clipper spacecraft over here. And oh, on, on Friday, we got first light from our new Earth science mission studying Earth's water. So every single week, there are a number of incredible things happening because we're working on, we, we're flying about 40 missions. We're working on another couple of dozen missions in different stages of going from like the kernel of an idea all the way to getting ready to be launched. So there's always something different each and every day. And for me, my day is about trying to support our teams so that they can succeed in exploring the frontiers of space. Fantastic. And Katie would actually like to know what steps did you take to get where well, you are today? Well, my background is, is um, I was actually on a fairly traditional academic path. I realized in college, it's a longer story, but I won't tell you the long story. I realized in college that I, I my fascination with space could also potentially be a career. And so um, I studied hard and got a PhD at Caltech actually, which, is, which operates GPL for NASA. So now it's great to be back part of the Caltech family. Um, and then I was a professor and got tenure and had students and was teaching and doing research. And I was on a pretty traditional path. And then for lots of reasons that again, I don't have time to, to go into, I actually ditched my tenure and went and joined NASA for a while, moved to the East Coast, um, kind of uprooted my whole life and went and worked at NASA for six years in three different jobs. And then I went back to academia for a while. And so my last job right before coming to JPL was I was president of a university in Massachusetts called WPI, Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Goat Nation, go goats. Um, and, uh, <laughs> And so being able to kind of broaden my experience, do more than one type of job in my career was a really important part of what um, has enabled me now to be ready to come and, and uh, lead a place like JPL. Fantastic. And it's great to hear that there wasn't one linear path for you that you could <laughs> exactly. explore Exactly. So options. definitely not a linear path. And, and in fact, so much of it I really feel is about learning to recognize good opportunities. Not every opportunity is a good opportunity, but learning to recognize those and then um, and then grabbing some of them and, and perhaps taking a little bit of a right turn from where you might have expected your career to go. It's often those experiences that can be really broadening that can help us then make an impact on a broader scale. And this okay. next question, Lori, is going to test your movie knowledge here. So Singh is wanting to know, Interstellar mm, or The Martian? They're both Matt movies, right? McConaughey and Damon. How to choose, how to choose. Okay, yes. no, actually it's easy, The Martian, sorry. Like I'm married to an astronomer, he might say Interstellar. For me, I'm a planet girl and I say The Martian. I, the, the book is even better than the movie, if you can believe it. And a lot more stuff happens to him in the, in the book than happens in the movie. But the thing I love about it is it's, you know, it's close enough to reality that uh, technically that even people here at a place like JPL were, were pretty into it. So, and, and just the idea of being able to sit on a, on a edge of a cliff on Mars and look out over that landscape, that's a dream I've had since I was a kid. Yeah, making that kind of yeah. dream visualized yeah, into reality through a movie. <laughs> Heading back to JPL, what do you think the future holds? I think for our future JPL? is really, really exciting. So we have a lot of really, really cool missions coming up. So in uh, solar system exploration, which is kind of our bread and butter here, people kind of know us as the Mars rover people, but we also send missions to other parts of the solar system. So just this year, later this year, we're going to launch a mission called Psyche which is going to explore for the first time ever a metal world. It's a metal asteroid called Psyche. We've never been to a metal world before. It's gonna go into orbit around uh, this asteroid and, and try and understand it from lots of different aspects. So that's our next big launch is Psyche in October. Then a year after that, our next launch to the outer solar system, Europa Clipper, a mission that's gonna explore the icy moon that's orbiting Jupiter that we think has a liquid water ocean beneath the icy moon. It's so exciting. This is a potential, a whole new type of habitable environment in our solar system, ocean worlds in the outer solar system. And this is the first mission truly dedicated to fully exploring one of those ocean worlds. So it's being built right now in our clean room. And actually for everyone watching, you should 
go out and look up on YouTube, you can find live camera feed of the uh, engineers and technicians actually building the Europa Cl Clipper spacecraft right now. If you go search for Europa Clipper live on YouTube, you will find um, our, our folks at JPL actually building that mission. So that launches next October. And then I'm giving you a long answer, but and then um, we've got um, the next right. big missions in our solar system. Actually, the, the biggest one, the biggest solar system mission we will have ever attempted is something called Mars Sample Return, where we want to go to Mars and pick up 30 bits of rock that Perseverance, the rover that's there right now, is driving around and collecting, drilling little pieces of rock that are about the size of your pinky and uh, collecting them, really fascinating rocks that could answer the question about whether we're alone in the universe. We're going to send a mission to go get those rocks and bring them back to Earth about a decade from now. That is the hardest thing we've ever tried to do. It is the, one of the most exciting scientific things we've ever tried to do. So we're doing all of those things. And we're doing a bunch of cool things in astrophysics and in Earth science as well, which I would also love to talk about. But I feel like I should stop and let you ask me another question if you want to keep going. Oh, well. I think that's going to be my next question for you. But as you were mentioning with Europa, the website is youtube.com slash NASA JPL. And it's going to be that first box that you see that says live for anyone that wants to watch. Or do you catch yourself okay. sometimes just yeah. watching that? It's so fun. It's cool to see like how people are just working and it's out. It's great because like, it gives you a sense of the of scale day. of the spacecraft because you can see people on it. And the people are like this and the spacecraft's like this. And it's really big. Um, it's it's a quite impressive um, mission that's going to fly all the way out to Jupiter, which is five times further from the sun than the Earth. And as big as the spacecraft itself is, the solar panels that are needed to power it out at Jupiter are the size of a basketball court. I mean, they're gigantic. They're, they're the length of a basketball court. So it's it's really a huge thing. It's I think it's probably the biggest thing we've built. Um, our sample return will be a little bit bigger even, which is, if you can believe it, it's great to talk about that sense of scale because you can't really see right. it in animation. So go so check out the live nice camera and then you can it. see it compared to people, right? So you can see how big it is. Perfect. And you know what I'm going to ask you? A continuation of what you were talking about. What's yeah, coming so, up next um, for JPL? So, you know, again, people know us for solar system exploration planets. In some ways, what animates us really is, is these questions about life on Earth and life in the universe. And so we are exploring Mars, we are exploring moons of Jupiter, but, but the other place to think about life elsewhere is on planets around other stars. And so we are building, you know, we just launched the amazing, um, we, NASA, just launched the amazing James Webb Space Telescope, and we, JPL, had an instrument on board that space telescope. The next space telescope that's going to launch in about 2027 is called the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, named after an awesome woman. She was amazing. And, um, and we're building a sensor, an instrument for that called the chronograph instrument. Its job is to, if you want to take a family portrait of another solar system, like lots of pictures of, of the planets around the other stars, you, it's hard to do because the light of the star is so bright that you can't see the planets. So this instrument actually really, really effectively blocks the light of the star so that we can see the planets themselves. And that's what this instrument's gonna do. And so we're gonna take dozens, hundreds, even maybe even more of family portraits of other solar systems. And that is the first step to sort of trying to sense whether life could have gotten started on some of those planets. And so it's a huge technology leap forward and I think it's going to blow people's minds when it flies. The other big thing that we do here at JPL is try and protect life here on Earth. And so we have, and this is sort of a best kept secret, I would say, about JPL is we have a ton of Earth science missions here, missions that we launch that look back down at Earth to try and understand our own planet, how it's changing and evolving, and try and put you know, actionable information in the hands of people who need it as they're making decisions about the future of our planet. So not only understanding it better from a science point of view, but really making a difference in people's lives. I just saw a presentation this morning about a sensor that we have flying on the International Space Station right now, which is learning about um, heat, the heat effects in cities. And, and cities are actually doing things to try and reduce the say the heat that's released from roadways by painting them different colors and we're actually sensing what kind of difference that's making heat waves are the biggest natural killers of 
people in, in our country. And to be able to help cities manage heat more effectively, it's amazing. So those are the kind of things we do with our earth science missions. We just launched SWAT, which is looking at earth's water. And next we have a mission called NISAR, which is gonna help us understand all these kind of things happening on land, whether it's ecosystems and biomass, earthquakes and volcanoes, and also just how the ice sheets are changing. So that was a lot. There's a lot happening here. <laughs> it's, it's so exciting. Any given day, it could be Earth, it could be Mars, it could be Jupiter. Uh, it can be exoplanets around other stars. It was a really nice comprehensive list and great to bring up all the Earth missions as yeah. we get closer to Earth and Day again, as well. This is something that people don't realize how much you can learn about our own planet from space. It's, uh, it's a really critical part of, of understanding how Earth is changing and, and what we can do to, um, to mitigate that change, to, to manage it better, like um, managing greenhouse gas emissions, but also to adapt to our changing planet, to really understand how coastlines are changing and flood risk and things like this. Um, so we're working on all of those questions through our science program. And I'm again reading some of these comments that are coming in, Lori, and this is kind of the question to wrap it up. People want some advice for young professionals, um, young women specifically, who want to enter a career and pursue STEM. What well, advice, my main advice do you have? Is for go them? for it because there is a place for you. There's a place for you at JPL. There's a place for you in STEM fields. They are get, it, we are getting better and better all the time at making STEM a place for everyone. Is it perfect? Is any um, institution perfect? It is not. But but the only way that we continue to make space the place for everyone is to have people continue to, to come in and, and work on space with us. So for women who are interested, for anyone who's interested in exploring a career in space, you know, studying science is a, or engineering is a great way to, uh, to pursue that. Uh, there are so many um, exciting ways that you can get involved, whether you're basically any kind of scientist or almost any kind of engineer, there's a, an aspect of what we do in space exploration that you can participate in. But I'll tell you what, we have communications professionals like yourself at JPL. We have um, attorneys, we have all kinds of business people who help us with the finances and the scheduling and making sure that we understand what it's going to take to achieve our missions. Um, you know, facilities folks, we have all kinds of people involved in, in uh, sending our missions to space. When, when we launch something into space, it's not only scientists and engineers that make it happen. It's, it's a huge diverse team. And so um, there are a lot of different ways to get involved in the space business. So that's the other thing I would say. And if you dream about it, you know, keep that dream alive and keep working towards it. There are a lot of ways for young people to get involved with NASA. You can, NASA has education programs that start, you know, early in your, in your educational time and then go through internships and things in college. Those are really important to, to go for if you want to uh, be a part of the space industry. It's great to start young and get that experience. That's where we meet a lot of our future employees is through our internship programs. So definitely encourage people to go on our website and look at those um, and, and, and apply and become a part of, uh, a part of our team. And if you're a, an engineer out there now who's looking for work or thinking about making a career change, hey, check out our jobs website because we have positions open. So we're always happy to, uh, to have folks join us here at JPL. Yeah, and that website is jpl.jobs. And a little tiny add on to that question too, is people wanted to know what yeah. you did and what you studied specifically. Yeah, so I started out in, in college, I started out in chemistry. I was, I had a lot of interest as a young person. I was, you know, I was editor of my high school yearbook. So I was thinking about journalism actually. And then I was also sort of a geek uh, in a good way. I think geeks are awesome. But uh, so I was maybe gonna study math, but I actually had a really, really good chemistry professor as a freshman and got excited about chemistry. So I declared a chemistry major. I'm not a person who like knew from the age of 10 exactly what I wanted to do. That's not the case for me. I really sort of followed things as they came along and, and learned to take advantage of them. So I, I was a chemistry major, but then I, I managed to get this summer internship at NASA when I was 19. And again, it's a longer story, but I realized that most of the people I was working with, they were doing research on, um, on different planets in the solar system. They were mostly geologists and I had never taken any geology. So I went back to school as a junior in college and 
took a, a geology course and it turned out to be with a professor who was working on Mars. And so I ended up starting to do research with him, but then pretty quickly discovered that there was interesting science to be done at the intersection of chemistry and geology. And so many of the questions we're asking, whether it's about you know, life on Mars or, or oceans on Europa, take um, a, an interdisciplinary approach. It's not just about physics or chemistry or biology. It's a little bit of everything. The planets, to understand a planet, you have to understand lots of different kinds of science a bit. And so I enjoyed that interdisciplinary approach. So I, I started thinking about working in geochemistry at the intersection of the two things I was interested in. And it turned out that Caltech had a great PhD program in geochemistry. And so I was able to, to come here to, it, to Pasadena to Caltech for grad school and study meteorites. So I, uh, I worked on meteorites for my doctorate and that's kind of, yeah where I uh, where I got my start. It's always really fascinating to hear just these pathways too, because sometimes when you, you don't know it exists until you hear it and it yeah, was great I mean, hearing your story. And look, I think people think like I have that. to figure out the perfect path to get to my goal. My message to you is there is no one path that will either get you there or not get you there. There are many, many paths that can get you there. So. You know, if you're interested in working in space, probably the easiest way to get involved is to, you know, do that science and engineering or science or engineering. Actually, science and engineering is really powerful when you bring those two together. So, you know, continue to think about, um, you know, don't opt out of those science and math courses, lean into them and, and, uh, and try and get that hands-on experience, whether that's, you know, FIRST Robotics. I love FIRST Robotics, you know, outside the classroom, getting hands-on experience building robots, or you know, internship opportunities or whatever they might be, because that's also what brings STEM to life. It's not about what's in the textbooks, it's about how you can really use it in real life. That is a fantastic message to wrap all of this up. Thank you so Thank much for you. your time, Thank you, it was great Lori. to be with you, and thanks again to everyone for watching, this was fun. Of course, and I'm just going to let viewers know that if they want to know more about our missions and our projects, they can follow at NASA JPL. And to learn about life at JPL, like you were talking about, and career opportunities, there's also at NASA JPL Careers. That's where you're coming live to us now, right now, and jpl.jobs for those career opportunities. Thank you again as we continue to dare mighty Bye. things together. Bye, Lori.